I know I'm late on this one, but we need to talk about Game 5 for the Toronto Maple Leafs and some of the fan reaction I've seen afterwards. And after fighting back in Game 4, it just wouldn't be enough for the Leafs who would fall in overtime Game 5, ending the series. After the Leafs pressure, the Panthers get the puck back, and greasy old Nick Cousins gets it and waits and waits and waits at everyone as he comes down the wing and slings one past Wall to finish for the Panthers. And of course, they take it 4-1, stunning the home crowd as they wait for the opportunity now to play the Kane in the conference finals. Florida keeps winning and keeps upsetting people on their way to the best of four. Bob, he's just found another level, and the Leafs could not shake him whatsoever, only scoring three or more goals in one game. The game they won. Playoff Bob is scary, and it's really going to be interesting to see how Carolina matches up against him. For the Leafs, at least you can say they had some heart in this one. They had some great chances in the second and the third, some great control in overtime, minus a bogus penalty. They peppered over 50 shots on net, but it just wasn't enough, and I'm seeing two types of Leaf fans right now. One is reflecting on the core and how quite simply they didn't do enough. This year, they managed one home game win in six attempts during the playoffs. Their top scorers just didn't show up for round two with Austin Matthews, for example, having two assists only in five games. There's something psychologically wrong with this team. The Leafs are just anti-clutch. It's remarkable how bad they've been in the playoffs and how again and again key players just start disappearing and the Leafs need to look at players like Matthews who's going to be asking for probably a league-high salary when his contract comes up. Matthews looked at times like a $5 million player. I thought he was pretty good, actually, in Game 5, but if you're going to want to be paid like the guy, you can't go a whole series without scoring a goal. It's tough because they've got so much talent on one team, and I actually really love the additions they made this year, bringing in Ryan O'Reilly. I thought Luke Shen looked pretty good, but I don't know whether they can run it back with this team again. The other thing I saw on this was the most prominent from Leaf fans was complaints about the refereeing. And I will say, yeah, there were definitely some issues, not just in this series, but throughout the entire NHL playoffs. I think NHL referees have an extraordinarily hard job due to the speed of the game. I'm not one to try to turn an issue with refing into a big series-wide statement, but I understand why Toronto fans are upset. There was a goal called back, the penalty I mentioned, plus even on the last play, it looks like some interference. Whatever. Be frustrated. That's okay. However, what just makes me laugh is when Leafs fans, and this really is the Leafs I've seen more than anybody else, and I say this as someone who considered the Leafs to be my B team, think there's some big conspiracy against them. Like, of all teams, the NHL is trying to hurt the Toronto Maple Leafs. I saw this tweet from a Leafs podcast, which said, congrats, NHL, your plan worked, and now Carolina versus Florida will be the least viewed conference final of all time. And I mean, that's just such pathetic behavior. I get it, you're sad your team lost, but for one, trying to take a shot at the teams that won, and they're saying they're having a small fan base, this is why people don't like Toronto. Insinuating that the NHL has something against Toronto and that they plan for this is just a joke. If the NHL wants to set a series, I think they probably want Toronto, their most profitable NHL franchise, or at least top two alongside the Rangers, to make the conference finals. They want those TV ratings. The NHL is set up to want you to win, and you still only manage to score three goals in one game. Just grow up. Stop being a whiny baby and get over it. Were there some bad calls? Absolutely. Absolutely. But let's be honest, Toronto was lucky to get past Tampa. They squeaked out some games they shouldn't have. To act like the NHL is depriving fan bases of a team which is getting their ass smoked at every opportunity, the chance to be in the second round is why Leafs fans are an absolute laughing stock. The way Leafs fans have also been reacting to this scene with Radko Gudis yelling after the puck goes in in overtime, have you watched hockey before? People are making it out like he's yelling specifically in the face of Wall. The dude just witnessed a game-winning series clinching goal. He's just celebrating. And yeah, I totally understand it's annoying watching it again. It probably is a missed call on him holding the stick. But like, Wall didn't even notice Gouda's yelling according to himself. This tweet, the Leafs got outplayed, but Gouda's yelling in the face of Wall was a classless act. Piece of shit. Reading the subreddit for the Leafs. This is disgraceful. You just won. You just got away with the penalty. The series is over. What's the point of rattling a rookie goaltender that just saved 50 shots? Maybe this is just me being emotional, but fuck you. Have some class. I don't know any self-respecting Panthers fan can look at this picture and celebrate it. Someone should have sacked him after he did that. The fact that no one did anything is exemplary of what's wrong with this team. Play a sport. Play a sport just once. The Leafs are so bad that there are entire people who have made their online identity based
based around complaining about the world being against the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I'm not talking about someone like Steve Dangle, who complains when the Leafs are bad, but ultimately blames the team, most of the time anyway. I'm not trying to call anyone out by name here, and same with that other podcast. Listen, I get it. You're upset when your team loses, especially when it's the first time being in the second round for so long. You tweet things sort of with the fury. I've been there. But if you've been active on hockey Twitter and on Toronto Maple Leafs Twitter, at least you probably know who I'm talking about. On a separate note, you sort of see this with advanced stats as well. For me personally, I thought Matthews just did not pass the eye test. Again, except really for this most recent game. He just looked like he was getting out skated and out hustled, where in the first round, I was so impressed by how he was fighting and getting in the nasty areas, blocking shots, everything. And ultimately, at some point, I think it's fair to say, listen, expected goals, they don't matter. They're nice in breaking down why a team is effective or not, but you can't lean on expected goals forever when a player isn't producing throughout an entire playoff round. And this also isn't the first time we're saying this about that player in particular. But that's all I've got for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown. Sorry for the delay. I've got some of my YouTube partners who work on my other channels with me in town. We had a fun night last night. I was definitely not in a state to edit videos, but that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you soon.